Today in Getting Real with the Housewives, Shannon Bedore arrested for DUI and hit and run. Plus, we look at what Shannon and Vicky had to say about her relationship with John. We have had arguments before. Some of them have involved, al in, involved alcohol, some of them haven't. And Erin Litchie talks about her questioning Jessel's backstory. She tries to connect with people through comparison. Yeah. And sometimes the comparison just isn't right. And we have an exclusive excerpt from Jackie Goldschneider's upcoming book, The Weight of Beautiful. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey, Christina Garibaldi here, and welcome to Getting Real with the Housewives. And wow, 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 it is a huge Housewives News Week. We're going to talk everything that we know about Shannon's DUI arrest in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's see what you guys had to say about last week's show. Lou and Jay says, well, hasn't Shannon just been arre arrested for drinking and driving and clipped a house? So maybe it's unkind to say Shannon needs rehab, but maybe she does just saying. So this was in reference to last week's show where we showed you the clip of Shannon calling Gina out for saying that she needs rehab. I mean, what we're hearing right now is that she is getting the help that she needs, and it's not a lack situation at all. Somebody definitely could have gotten seriously hurt in this. Barbara says, what's the difference if it's Teresa and Melissa not speaking? Not many talk to Marge, Rachel, so what's the difference? Melissa and Joe made their bed with old sheets from Teresa. Teresa has moved on. Why can't they make your own storylines? I said this last week. I am hoping that this is not another season of just Melissa versus Teresa versus Joe. I'm tired of it. We've been dealing with this for years. Hopefully we can focus on some of the new women and some of the old storylines. I hope it's just a refresh and a restart this upcoming season. And then Raz says, new Roni is fun, told you. A fresh start after the sad and embarrassing end to its previous incarnation. Who can forget Ramona's behavior and attitude at Shabbat? Those characters represented an earlier mindset. Roni 2023 is up to date, neurotic, and relevant. I couldn't agree with you more. I did have some reservations before I started watching the show and these ladies are real relevant like you said and definitely bringing a fresh new look to new york so i'm glad that you are enjoying it all right like we said big news this week shannon bedore the newport beach Police Department confirmed to Us Weekly on Monday that Shannon was arrested on September 16th after clipping her car into a residential home while intoxicated. After reportedly parking her vehicle in the middle of the street, she got out and began walking her dog in an attempt to appear like she was walking him the whole time. Now, the police department told us that Shannon's car was seized as part of the investigation and that she was cited and released. So her attorney did tell Us Weekly in a statement that his client was extremely apologetic and remorseful for the accident. He continued we will be awaiting the official information on this case as it becomes available and Shannon is prepared to accept full responsibility for her actions. Now her friend Jeff Lewis for his part claimed on his radio show that his close friend was entering counseling this week. Now this is wild. So she was apparently tracked by her leaking car fluid. Now this is according to a resident of the apartment that Shannon crashed into. Uh, that resident spoke exclusively to Us Weekly and said that it was her car fluid that led police on this tra trail and she was reporting at her ex John's house and while she said to us that they were on good terms she and Vicky had this to say about their relationship take a look do you blame the show for the breakup at all no 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 I don't no no we we argued mm -hmm. we argued a lot yeah but it's good that you guys are on good terms now so that's yeah. exciting yes. yeah so I love John yeah I love John and Shane together we had an opportunity to spend some time with both of them and mm -hmm. you know I don't know the arguments mm -hmm. I don't know but I go back to what, what are you arguing about? Fix the argument. If it, mm -hmm. You know, if it's if it's drinking or him or you're hurt too much or whatever, you remove that out of the out of your lives, and all of a sudden, let's see. Okay, well, works. you can't say drinking right. because then people are going to go, oh, freaking drinking. That got it off. It doesn't mean you're drinking. Yes. No. <laughs> if John has been overserved, mm -hmm. sometimes there's an argument. That if, comes but if either of them has, it, it, alcohol is a source of arguing for, for many, every, yes, for most I'm couples. That's, mm -hmm. that's that's what you look at. Right. You say, okay, maybe we limit it, and yeah. then let's see how we are together. Because they hey, have you just really, should. This is where Vicky is like <laughs> digging a no, hole that doesn't look good for no. me. So like I I'm, I don't have a freaking drinking problem. Don't have a drinking and John, problem. you know, we're we're we have had arguments before. Some of them have involved al in, involved alcohol. Some of them haven't. I know that. I'm saying to you, look at the reason why you're arguing and then fix it. Because I like you and John together. He's your best friend. He is your best friend. <sighs> Do you want a reconciliation in, in the future? I um I. I don't think that it's, I, I don't think that it's possible. I mean, I think there's, when you get to a certain point, I mean, 
it's a discussion that I have to, that we have to have. Of course, you know. Yeah. And just for now, we are friendly, and that's where it's going to stay for now. So, based on what Shannon and Vicky said, it seems like when the two of them kind of mixed drinking and fighting, things got a little toxic. I mean, we saw that on this season of the show. It seemed like Shannon was in a really, really bad place when it came to her relationship. She said that she would be paralyzed by the fights that they would have. She wouldn't want them to bring anything up about her personal life on camera. And this is just a really sad situation. I mean, I'm sure if you are a fan of Housewives, I'm sure you saw the video of Shannon hitting the side of this building. Luckily, nobody was home at the time because somebody could have been seriously, seriously injured. Hopefully this is her wake up call and she looks at this as a, you know, maybe a positive thing in her life now that she can get the help that she actually needs because this is a really serious situation. Her fellow housewives have been supporting her. I know we spoke with Bronwyn Wyndham Burke and she spoke about her former co-star's uh, DUI arrest. She told us weekly exclusively, I think Shannon has been going through a hard year. Obviously what happened is not okay. You should never drink and drive. It was a very unfortunate night for her, but fortunately no one was hurt. Bronwyn has been very candid about her own sobriety and hopes that this will be an eye-opening moment for Shannon as well as a catalyst for change, which is pretty much what I echoed as well. It's just, it's a really unfortunate event for Shannon. We heard that Bravo is not picking back up cameras for this for this one, so, you know, hopefully she gets the help that we, she needs and then maybe she'll come back around and tell us, you know, a little bit more about her story. Definitely not a good week for Shannon Bedore. All right, well, Jackie Goldschneider is getting extremely candid about her eating disorder in her upcoming book, The Weight of Beautiful. And in an exclusive expert, an excerpt obtained by Us Weekly, she opens up about the moment Jennifer Aiden called her out on camera. She wrote, two years into being a housewife and no one had noticed I was sick. No one had noticed I was torturing myself every minute of every day or that I was famished while I moved the food on my plate to get to the lettuce. No one had noticed I was anorexic and then they did. Margaret Joseph said, you have issues with food. And then Jennifer, one of the castmates, of course, suddenly announced to the table and I wondered if my world was about to crumble. I'm actually speaking with Jackie next week. I've read The Weight of Beautiful and usually when you get these, um, Housewives books or books about like reality stars. You're like, okay, it's just another fluff book. I honestly couldn't put this book down. She is so candid, so honest, so open about her eating disorder. It was a severe eating disorder. This went on for years and years, decades, pr through her pregnancy, through her marriage, pretty much big chapter of her life, this was with her. And I commend her for being so brave and honest and open about this because I feel like this book is going to help a lot of people. I usually don't like these types of books, but it was, it's a really great read and I'm excited to have her in here next week so we can chat all about it. All right, well, Andy Cohen has a lot of thoughts about Heidi Montag and other non-Bravo stars throwing their hats in the housewives ring after she was asked why she's not on the show. Heidi and Spencer sat down with The Hollywood Reporter and Heidi claimed that Andy must be a fan of Lauren Conrad, which is probably why he's never offered her a housewife role since it makes sense for her to be on the show. Well, Andy, for his part, attempted to clear up any potential drama between himself and Heidi, saying, I don't know them. I didn't watch Laguna Beach, so I don't even have much institutional knowledge of them. I have said that I thought it would be weird if they were on the housewives for the same reason that I was saying that it would be weird if Snooki came on the house. Housewives. He added, they're so identified not only with another show, but with another network. So it's like, but wait a minute, you are supposed to be on Jersey Shore. It just makes it weird. So that's the reason. They said that they thought it was because I was a, Lauren, a big Lauren Conrad fan. And I'm like, kind of not. They're kind of not thinking about them. Not saying that he wasn't a fan of Lauren Conrad, just that he's not thinking of them all the time. I do agree with him. I feel like Heidi is so synonymous with the hills and uh, Laguna Beach that, of course, when you see her come on, that's what you're going to think of. Same thing with Snooki. I can never see her really crossing over to be a housewife. I don't think that she's expressed that she doesn't even really want to. So unfortunately for Heidi, while she may think she's a good fit, others do not. And the other person that, that doesn't is the person in charge. All right. Well, the ladies of Roni headed to Anguilla for what was supposed to be a fun trip. But with pranks gone wrong and Jessel's past in question, it was anything but. So I recently caught up with Erin about her comments on Jessel's past and her thoughts on her castmate today. Take a look. Why was it so important for you to kind of call out Jessel in these um, these past few episodes about her upbringing and you know her kind of maybe almost painting a picture that wasn't? Saying I grew up with nothing mm -hmm. is I think a very strong statement. Um, growing up comfortably is something different or middle class is something different than growing up 
with nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that she, a lot of times, and you'll see this as the, you know, episodes air, mm -hmm. but a lot of times Jessel tries, and not in a non-malicious way, but she tries to connect with people through comparison. Yeah. And sometimes the comparison just isn't right. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, especially at dinner, I was really feeling for Sai. And I mean, Bryn wasn't there, but even for Bryn, because they really had the struggle mm -hmm. um, that is not comparable to what Jessel went through. She mm -hmm. had two loving parents that put her through college. You know, she had a, a soft landing pad if right. ever she were to fall, and the other two did not. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't feel like it was a right way to compare. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't sit there and say, well, my mother was a single mother as she was with me mm -hmm. when, you know, she and my father got divorced and I was alone with my mom. Yeah. She had all these struggles. Like I wasn't sitting there comparing because it wasn't it wasn't a comparable sure. situation. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean that Jessel didn't have struggle. It didn't, I, I didn't mean that she was fed it with a silver spoon, but you know, it was just different and it, and without her meaning to, it came off very insensitive. Mm -hmm. And it, that's what the viewers don't fully see. It seems like everybody is in a good, well, at least Aaron and Jessel are in a good place um, at this moment, but a lot can change in Housewives world as we know. All right, let's get into our social spotlight of the week where we discuss which housewife caught our attention on social media. I have two this week. My first goes to Tamara Judge who posted this photo of the Trace Amigas after the news of Shannon's uh, um, arrest came forward. She just posted with a heart, um, her hugging Shannon and Vicky. It was interesting, Kelly Dodd actually came out and said that she feels like Tamara isn't being a good friend to Shannon at this time. She didn't really elaborate as to why. I'm sure Tamara will fire back eventually. She said that Vicky's been a good friend. Kelly said that she's brought over food to Shannon's. Interesting that she said that Tamara has not been a good friend during this time. My other one goes to Emily Simpson because girl looks so good. She posted this, these photos, these videos of her, and she said that she has lost almost 40, or 40 pounds in the past few months now that she has really focused on her health her well-being. She spoke to us about it recently saying that, you know, while a lot of people maybe think that Ozempic was um, the reason why she lost the weight, she did say that she took it at one point, but she said that she is putting in the work. She is in the gym nonstop and hard work does pay off because she looks absolutely amazing. So good for her. All right, well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on Shannon Bedore's arrest, where you think she goes from here. Let us know what you think about all this drama that's going on on Roni, and if you think Heidi Montag should join the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We'll see you guys next week.